Hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, having me today. I'm very pleased to, to be one of the presenters. So my name is Dr. Teresa Topic, and I am the uh, medical director and founder of Medihuana. I have been prescribing medicinal cannabis since March 2018. However, at this stage, my main focus is uh, to educate doctors and other health uh, professionals about this important plant. I am very passionate about uh, introducing medicinal cannabis into modern medicine to be used uh, judiciously and responsibly in a proper clinical setting. So let me now um, share my screen. Okay, I hope everyone can see it. So my uh, topic today is cannabis in palliative care. However, I just want to share a little bit about my result, my clinical observations, and perhaps some general uh, thoughts about cannabis. So um, I prescribed to, uh, cannabis to over 200 patients since March 2018, and uh, I have observed that cannabis can be used to treat multiple conditions and multiple symptoms uh, simultaneously. And patients re uh, reported uh, beneficial uh, responses on many levels. First of all, improved functionality. They've been able to start doing things that they couldn't do before and things that we take for granted, for example, taking children um, or, or grandchildren to the park. And also they, they, they started going back to work, doing some TAFE courses and just feeling better in general. Of course, improvement in overall quality of life, that's a very significant uh, uh, response. And some of the patients reported the um, improved ability to focus, motivate and concentrate and improved mood. Uh, patients uh, reported various degrees in pain reduction. For some, it was just modest. Uh, for some, it was very, very significant. Uh, quite a large number of patients uh, were able, started reducing or even stopped the other medication, especially opioids. And improvement of sleep was very significant. Um, that's probably, I'm confident to say that about 80 to 90% commented that they've never slept better. When it comes to adverse effects, really not many. It is a very forgiving medicine. So uh, drowsiness was reported by some, but was mitigated by simply taking cannabis at night. Some of the patients reported dry mouth, increased appetite, feeling agitated, a bit of fatigue. And, uh, but then this particular patient said that there are so many other benefits that she was happy to, to deal with it. With it, so we worry about psychoactive effects. Within that group of patients, I only uh, observe it uh, in, among three patients, but these effects were easily mitigated by simply stopping cannabis at night and restarting again at a smaller dose. But what's interesting, some of them commented that this episode of psychoactive effects opened certain portal to a different way of thinking. For example, one of the patients who was an artist uh, started producing beautiful drawings again. So, I'm confident to say that when it comes to cannabis, it is a multi-target drug because it has this unique ability to interact with the human body, not only through the endocannabinoid system, but also many other metabolic pathways. So we, as I mentioned before, we can treat many medical conditions and many simple simultaneously, thus reducing the need for polypharmacy. And it is a very safe medicine, uh, very low level of tox toxicity, no reported deaths when uh, uh, overdose purely on cannabis. Um, there are practically no CB1 receptors in the brainstem, especially cardiorespiratory centers. So uh, there's no reported deaths of, uh, death due to cannabis overdose. However, we need to be mindful that higher doses may increase the possibility of adverse effects. So for that reason, uh, cannabis should be used in a proper clinical setting. The median lethal dose of THC is more than 800 milligram per kilo. So it would be very difficult to get into that dose. And also safety ratio of THC is one to over 1,000, meaning that one would have to consume 1,000 consecutive doses to get into lethal effect. And in comparison, uh, codeine that has been um, commonly used in the treatment of chronic pain, the safety ratio is only 120, meaning that you only need to take 20 codeine tablets to get to this lethal effect. And Cannabis interacts with the human body through the, um, the endocannabinoid system, as well as many other metabolic pathways. Also, we've been talking today quite a bit about whole plant medicine or, or single uh, or, or isolates and so on. I like to say that uh, the single molecule synthetic agents were introduced into modern medicine in the beginning of the 20th century. And uh, doctors were trained to rely on them as very predictable, safe, and evidence-based, while 
was at the same time looking down at plant medicines as inferior, unpredictable, and more of a tonic or placebo effect. Unfortunately, that approach led to development of huge folly pharmacy where it is not unusual to um, see patients taking anything between 10 to 20 different drugs so, and all of them coming with a long list of adverse effects, including death when overdose. So when it comes to cannabis, it's not just one uh, single molecule. We've got major cannabinoids, minor cannabinoids, terpenes, and flavonoids, and all of these different components in the plant um, possess different therapeutic and modular effects. And according to entourage effect, all of them working synergistically in producing um, effects that are greater than the sums of the individual parts. So for example, CBD modulating uh, psychoactive effects of THC is the example of entourage effect. And at the same time, THC is actually enhancing the therapeutic properties of CBD. So we need to remember that cannabis is not just THC or just CBD. And patient, as someone commented here already, uh, tend to tolerate whole plant extract uh, much better than just isolates or synthetic. Now, I'd like to talk about my favorite theory of cannabinoid deficiency syndrome, which was postulated by Dr. Russo in 2004. Many scientists believe that many medical conditions, uh, uh, especially the ones related to inflammation and immune system, might be due to deficiency in the endocannabinoid system. Perhaps some patients are not making enough or too much of uh, receptors or endocannabinoids for the system to work efficiently in maintaining homeostasis and keeping health. And uh, I tend to talk to my patients about this theory. And I just tend to tell them, look, you, you've got this uh, endocannabinoid system that might become deficient. And to me, when it comes to cannabis, it's not just about that particular symptom. I believe that with medicinal cannabis, we are balancing the underlying deficiency. So that's why perhaps we may not have specific products for pain or for epilepsy or for other things. And that's why cannabis is such an individualized medicine we will establish the right product and the right dosing when talking to our patients. And so it has to be patient-centered uh, based on individual dosing due to, deficient, due to uh, differences in the endocannabinoid tone. So the, si the, the, the approach that one size fits all, it's not going to, to work here. Uh, it is basically art of medicine to me when we uh, work closely with the patient, we get the right product and we get the right dose for them. We get into that. We want to get the minimal doses. The approach is start low, go slow. So we want to get the minimal, most effective doses and no adverse effect. So cannabis can be used in the treatment of many clinical conditions. And this was the copy just copied and uh, this list was copied and pasted from TGA portal and the most commonly approved condition is chronic pain. So I'm going to now talk about the palliative care and cannabis. So we know that um, palliative care is the medical discipline which is dealing with uh, symptom control for patients suffering from uh, incurable, uh, serious life-limiting diseases. However, not patients under palliative care are terminal patients when death is expected to happen in a relatively short period of time. For example, patients with heart and lung disease, neurodegenerative diseases or HIV and AIDS. So the main focus of palliative care is to, to provide symptom control, improve quality of life, minimize side effects of medications use, and also provide holistic care, addressing the many aspects of chronic and serious illness, which is mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual. So palliative care re re relies on the use of many medications. Uh, some of them are to control symptoms, and we need to use our best to control side effects of these symptoms. So, for example, commonly opioids, while we commonly use opioids while controlling pain to some degree, also come with a long list of adverse effects, such as uh, increased dizziness, nausea, constipation, sedation, uh, physical dependence, vomiting, and respiratory depression. And the most these patients also complain a lot about feeling like a zombie, that they are unable to function and interact with their loved ones the way they used to. They complain of reduced motivation, concentration, feeling, feeling drowsy. And that part is very much emphasized by patients and their families. They just want to feel like normal human beings till the end and uh, want to be able to, to communicate with the loved ones um, uh, clearly. And I hear that comment of appreciation from families that 
uh, he or she passed away uh, peacefully holding hands when they are on, on, on cannabis. And I also believe that a, a bit of a euphoric effect in this situation is very appropriate. And with um, excessive use of opioids, unfortunately, we created the opioid, uh, worldwide opioid epidemics. And data in Australia shows that 80% of all overdoses are due to legally prescribed drugs, especially opioids and benzos. So cannabis can help a variety of symptoms with, um, among this patient group and any other group, once again, because of its ability to interact with the endocannabinoid system and many other metabolic pathways in the human body. So what are the benefits? Quite a, quite a few. Cannabis can help appetite. It might be useful in the treatment of chemotherapy-induced neuropathy, helps sleep, uh, helps pain, also may improve anxiety and depression, and improves quality of life. Also for some patients, uh, may improve nausea and vomiting. So according to TGA, there's low grade of evidence for palliative care. We need more study, we need more research to understand it. We are very, we're relying on the guidelines quite a bit. So we also want to develop a clear and just as difficult as it is, we want to get clear guidelines what to do with the situation. So I just want to share my personal belief about level of evidence. So the evidence, because we are asking about evidence quite a bit with cannabis or anything else, there is high, moderate, low, and very low uh, level of evidence. But just the fact that we are not always sure how to research something, that doesn't mean that there is no evidence. And we've been relying very heavily on randomized clinical trials, systematic reviews, meta-analysis. But I'd like to point out that observation evidence has been a part of human experience from the beginning of time. And randomized clinical trials, albeit in the mid uh, in the middle of the 20th century, in response to the emergences of many uh, synthetic uh, single molecule drugs, and it became a golden standard. However, it uh, it is not. It is incomplete because so many times something that was evidence at some stage uh, then is not evidence anymore. For example, uh, hormone replacement therapy was a mainstream treatment in the 80s and 90s, and then we found out that it, that it wasn't the, the right thing to do. So we need to be very mindful, and I strongly believe in um, N equal one study when each patient is a part of the, of the research because that. And I think in combination with uh, traditional conventional randomized clinical trials and equal studies, we'll get better understanding of plant medicine because there's just so many variables here. So another uh, worry is that cannabis may interact with other medications used in palliative care. However, in our clinical experience, we are observing that drug interactions are not really of a significant problem. It is really more of a theoretical consideration and they occur with when cannabis is used at high doses. And most of the time we are using rather small doses of cannabis in our clinical practice. So now I'm just going to share the study, uh, which was the multi-center, uh, double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled graded dose trial. In this study, nabiximols were investigated to be used in the uh, opioid refractive pain in uh, uh, patients with uh, advanced cancer. So these patients were divided into three groups, uh, the, the group of low dose, medium dose, and high dose. In a low dose group, patients were using between one to two sprays per day. In the medium dose, six to 10, and the high dose, 11 to 16. This, uh, there was a total of 360 patients were randomized, 263 completed within a period of five weeks, and they did questionnaires measuring their um, worst pain, average pain, uh, sleep disruption, quality of uh, quality of life and uh, and mood. So uh, the study concluded that nabiximols and novel cannabinoid formulations may be used um, ad, ad on analgesic for patients with opioid refractive cancer pain. And a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled graded dose study demonstrated efficacy and safety at low and medium doses. The study showed that cannabis was well tolerated at uh, slow to medium doses. They had more adverse effects uh, within the group with, with high doses. So it's kind of like uh, less is more with regards to cannabis. So now I'm just going to talk to you about uh, my patient. 
and that I was a pleasure to meet uh, two years ago. Unfortunately, she passed away. That photo was taken during one of her holidays while she was on cannabis, um, 12 months prior to when she passed away. And and was a wonderful person. Uh, she went through a lot, she suffered a lot, but she never stopped smiling. And that, um, you know, cases like that really warm my heart when I see this patient getting even sort of help, being helped with cannabis. So she was referred to me by her local GP in 2018, and she presented with a history of a terminal metastatic pseudomaxoma peritonei with secondaries into the lungs and liver, and she was initially diagnosed in 2008. Over the years, she, mm, uh, she underwent multiple debulking surgery, she had uh, multiple perinectomies, she had appendicectomy, hysterectomy, splenectomy, clearance of gelatinous ascites, and many causes of chemotherapy that almost killed her, but and never stopped giving up but never, I'm sorry, but never uh, ever and never gave up. So when she uh, came, she presented with uh, following symptoms. Uh, she was complaining of ongoing abdominal pain, which was radiating to both thighs, and she rated her pain around eight, nine. Also, she suffered from insomnia, uh, secondary to nocturnal pain. Uh, she was um, uh, complaining of nausea, vomiting, poor appetite, cachexia. She was feeling anxious, and overall, she had poor quality of life. So her other medical problems included renal impairment, insomnia, uh, atrial fibrillation, gold, and depression, and, and anxiety. So at the time of presentation, she was taking amoxil, she was taking acetylopram for her depression, uh, metoprolol, uh, somac, and targin. Uh, the uh, unhelpful medication included targin. It was just a small dose, but she was unable to um, reduce it, to increase it because uh, higher doses cause drowsiness, lethargy, and patients were simply um, unable to increase her dose. Also, there is NSAIDs upset her stomach, panadine for cause, cause constipation, and panadol uh, was simply ineffective. So in the initial consultation, we always uh, go deeply into patient history. We talk about patient expectations. We explain that this is unapproved products. We talk about possible other adverse effects, uh, what are the patient responsibility, patient currently need to sign the consent form, and we're doing various assessment forms. In this uh, case, her pain level was about eight, nine. So we applied for uh, medicinal cannabis uh, ratio uh, uh, balance, 25 to 25. Uh, application was put for on 11 of June, and product was approved 12 of June. So we can see, even though we say access is difficult, that uh, even two years ago, we were getting approval within one day. Uh, so uh, the dosing strategy, we put her in 0.1 uh, at night, which was equal to uh, about 2.5 milligram of THC in the product. Uh, uh, we were titrating gradually by 0.1 every few days, and her optimum dose was just 0.1 in the morning, 0.15 uh, at lunch, and 0.1 at night. And so, maximum, so her optimal dose was just 0.35, quite small doses. And uh, so response. Uh, the pain reduction and reported pain reduction at one to two, and also periods of pain, no pain. Her sleep was improved. She also improved pain tolerance, uh, improved appetite, improved mood. Uh, overall quality of life was better. She was going on holidays uh, a lot. The, well, that picture that I just showed was taken during one of the, of the holidays. She loved to go to Karan Pass and they, they planned to buy a, um, a caravan. So then she also stopped tagging, uh, she stopped acetylopram, and she didn't report adverse effects. Unfortunately, last year, uh, her condition deteriorated. Uh, in May 2019, uh, they were just going, uh, her husband and her were just about to leave on uh, another holiday, and then she developed severe abdominal pain, uh, which was uh, due to bowel obstruction. Uh, between May and October, she underwent many surgeries. And uh, while she was in and out of hospital, cannabis was stopped. However, she was admitted again to hospital in October last year, and she requested that cannabis will be given to her. And that was very helpful. And eventually she passed away on 26th of October, 2019 in hospital. And her husband told me she was peaceful. And, um, and we can see that in this situation, patient had 12 months of good life, 
uh, enjoying time with her family, going on holidays, and it helped her on, on many levels. So I can see, I, I, I'm confident to say that cannabis is a very important therapeutic agent, can be used in the treatment of many medical conditions, and especially very useful in uh, palliative care. And that's just another testimony from another patient. This lady was in her 80s and she passed away in October 2018 from a metastatic cancer of the uterus. And that's the testimony from her family. They said that cannabis enabled the doctors to keep IS opioids and morphine-based medications to a minimum. And keeping opioids down gave the family time to interact with a lucid version of Alia to have quality life together in these last days of uh, our life. So this is it from me today. Thank you very much. Um, I enjoyed uh, presenting this uh, content to you. And if anyone uh, wishes to get any information about our work, that's info at Thank you very much.